professor of English, Mark Dumphy, you are joining us in the Thomas D. Clark Reading Room of the Katie Murrell Library for this episode of Lindsay Wilson Conversations. The way this works is you get to enjoy a beverage of your choice while discussing a topic of your choice. The beverage you have chosen is coffee with two creams, and the topic that you have chosen is Herman Melville as hip icon for beat generation. That is also the topic of a paper that you will have published in a forthcoming edition of Leviathan, a journal of Melville studies. What is Herman Melville as hip icon for the beat generation? Well, he, he was very influential in terms of all the beats, um, Kerouac in particular, but uh, also Ferlinghetti and uh, Gregory Corso and uh, Allen Ginsberg. Uh, to a lesser extent, William Burroughs, but Burroughs uh, knew uh, Moby Dick and made references to Moby Dick in one of his sci-fi works. Herman Melville and the Beats were separated by a century. What is the connection? Yeah, it's, it's interesting. It's, it's 100 years. I gave a, a paper at the American Literature Association on one of Melville's less-known novels, Pierre. And as I recollect, the title was Pierre as Dharma Bum, 100 Years of Beat Attitude. Um, but uh, Melville was a hipster. Um, he was uh, very unconventional. In fact, uh, in my paper, I talk about how Edith Wharton um, says that Melville uh, was uh, denounced because of his bohemianism, another synonym for beat. Um, but in Pierre, we have a group of uh, beat people um, early beats uh, being housed in a, an old church entitled the Apostles uh, down in Greenwich Village. It, you know, it, it appalled uh, the contemporary audience. In fact, uh, one review uh, simply wrote of Pierre, Herman Melville crazy. And of course, craziness is uh, something that the beats were accused of as well. When we refer to the beats, what do we mean? Well, we're talking about uh, four primary writers, all male, all white. Uh, this would be Allen Ginsberg. This would be Gregory Corso. I have to count my fingers. This would be Lawrence Ferlinghetti, uh, Jack Kerouac. I'll throw in another one, um, William Burroughs. And what were the Beats known for in terms of their literary style? Oh, uh, rebellion, um, autobiographical. Again, this is Melville. In fact, there's an early biography on Melville. I think it was published uh, during the Beat era for a young adult audience entitled Herman Melville, Rebel Genius. And uh, this is the way the Beats uh, also looked upon themselves. Um, and also uh, spontaneous prose. Uh, Kerouac is known for that. In fact, he has a document entitled Essentials of Spontaneous Prose. And I intend to work on a, uh, another piece in terms of exploring uh, Melville's third novel, Marty, or A Voyage Thither, in terms of uh, its following those techniques of spontaneous prose that, that um, uh, Kerouac uh, elicits in terms of that particular document. Approximately what years covered the beats? Oh, well, some people still say they're with us, you know, but uh, the 1950s in particular, and then uh, this is prior to the hippie era, but uh, On the Road was published in 1957, and Ginsburg's uh, reading of Howell at the uh, Sixth Gallery in San Francisco was, was a year before, 1956. Um, but, but this naval connection, and, and, and Kerouac's uh, first novel was The uh, Sea is My Brother, which has not been published. I'd love to look at that manuscript. Um, I'm sure there are many Melvillian references. So, so they would have this uh, mariner uh, relationship in common. And, and uh, Kerouac's works are road works, uh, uh, but, but so are Melville's. I mean, if you look at it in, a, in another sense, Moby Dick, too, is a road novel. Um, so I think they'd have a lot to talk about. How long has Melville's studies made a connection between Melville and the beat writers? Uh, really not only until recently. Um, there's a fascinating book called uh, Kerouac's Crooked Road by Tim Hunt. Uh, University of California at Berkeley, 
uh, which explores a relationship between um, Kerouac and Melville. And more, uh, more recently, John Leland's Hip, uh, The History, has come out. And uh, he makes connections between um, actually not just Melville, but uh, the whole panoply of American Renaissance writers, uh, Thoreau, uh, Melville, uh, Whitman, um, Hawthorne to a lesser extent. Um, as being the template uh, for, for the Beats um, in terms of their uh, concerns with organic theory, uh, concerns with uh, spontaneity and prose, um, transcendental um, Emerson, I, I neglected to mention as well, uh, transcendental um, self-sufficiency, self-reliance, uh, and vision. Um, as being um, a template, a basis for the beat writer's uh, concerns. Talk a little bit more about how spontaneity played in there. Yeah, there's uh, actually studies done in terms of rhetoric, uh, automatic writing, um, spontaneous writing, what um, uh, Kerouac called sketching. You know, the, the famous scroll of On the Road, well, you may not know. <laughs> is owned by the owner of the Indianapolis Colts. And um, he doesn't hoard it. He actually sends it out uh, on the road <laughs> so people can see it. And I saw it once in, in terms of a, a beat uh, retrospect that the Whitney Museum held in New York. Um, and, 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 and this was supposedly uh, written in, in three weeks by Kerouac using his essentials of spontaneous prose. And one gets the impression even more so in Marty, but certainly also in Moby Dick, um, that Melville is writing uh, extemporaneously, in other words, spontaneously. Um, but, but there's another parallel between uh, the Beats and, and Melville, this emphasis on automatic writing or spontaneous prose um, without revision. In fact, uh, Allen Ginsberg once told me, um, but he, he's told this to a lot of other people too, uh, when I had dinner with him, first thought, best thought, and I'll never forget that. In other words, there's no need to revise anything you write, really, although both Melville and the Beats and Whitman as well uh, clearly did, but, but the first thought that occurs to you is always your best thought, and, and we see this uh, sense of um, mindfulness, a Zen mindfulness, uh, a Zen sense of uh, um, thinking spontaneously um, without uh, mediation uh, in Melville and, and the Beats. In fact, I often tell my students uh, in terms of composing their first drafts is don't allow that internal censor to intrude. Uh, this is not the place where you worry about punctuation and spelling and getting the uh, uh, le mot juste, the right word, in the right place. You just need to get thoughts down on paper. And if anything, the beat scroll of uh, On the Road um, is an indication of that. You know, here we have thoughts down on paper. And, and, and yes, I mean, nowadays we have the actual translation, uh, translation, um, transcription rather, of the beat scroll uh, of On the Road. Um, and, and, and I haven't read the whole thing yet, but uh, by reading it, in fact, uh, supposedly there are more Melvillian references in the Beat Scroll than there is in uh, of On the Road, than On the Road itself, um, where there are, however, several Melvillian references. Um, but one can see the difference in terms of editing that um, Kerouac and his editors did vis-a-vis uh, -vis the uh, uh, Beat Scroll version of On the Road uh, and the first published version of On the Road in 1957. Professor of English Mark Dumphy, thank you for joining us for Lindsay Wilson Conversations. Why, thank you, sirs.